and then we will be live on YouTube for Clear Vision Club. Hello, hello, um, everybody. I'm super excited here. I'm Claudia Mühlenweg, creator of the Nachi Clear Vision Method. And I have another very, very special guest on today. And he will help us clear blocks to clarity because emotional reasons or emotional components are often the root cause or at least a big part of why we can't see clearly, why we have vision problems. And that really goes for any vision problem. And it's not just eye diseases or nearsightedness, it's also what the, the old age side, the presbyopia. So there's always emotional things that we probably are not aware of that are like skimming under the surface that we carefully buried under the rug and they will, um, but they will show up in the session today and Barry is here to help us clear some of those blocks. And I want to introduce him just a little bit more before I bring him on. He is the chief vision officer of the Vision School. He is a life visionary who has transformed his life through raising his own vibration, the inner world, and the frequency, which is the outer world, how you show up, using kinesiology and his own unique energy method called light body alignment. That's what we're going to experience today. And basically, he supports now people around the world. With, and, and, and he's also a vision teacher, like a Bates method teacher, just like me, and helps people just raise their frequency vib vibrations and clear blocks to all kinds of things in their life. He also developed a super cool game called Conversations that as I can highly recommend. And he's also the co producer of our vision documentary called Vision 2020 from Eyesight to Inside that he co-produced together with Nathan Oxenfeld. All right, without further ado, um, I'm going to bring Barry onto the stage here. Hello, Barry. Welcome, welcome. Good to have you. Hi, Claudia. It's really good to see you again. We got to see Claudia a few weeks ago live, and it's good to see you uh, online again as well. Yeah, Barry was visiting me here in Los Angeles. So yeah, without further ado, I mean, maybe share a little bit about your own story and how you sure. ended up doing what you're doing. And um, I'm going to hide my video and then it's all yours. Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, by the introduction, thank you for the introduction. And by the sounds of it, I've, I've been really busy the last few years. And literally, I have been with a whole range of things. And what I want to really share with people today is really this aspect of eyesight and emotions. And not just that emotions can affect our eyesight, but my intent today is that some people will have an improvement in their eyesight by actually clearing the blocks to those emotions. And that's what's really going to be exciting. And I'm looking forward to what we're going to be doing today. And the way that I also work, before I talk about myself, the way I work is all my work operates beyond time and space. That's my intent. So if you're listening to the replay, when we get to clear these blocks, we get to clear it for you as much as the live group, as much as the individual that I'm working with. So we're going to have a really fun afternoon here today. We're going to actually get to clear some brand new blocks that I've done just for this group, specifically for this group. And to let you know where I have come from before all of that, I was actually a school teacher and I literally took my son to an optometrist who suggested eye exercises. And I said, Go and tell that guy, you know, you need glasses. You know, like I, I was an accounting teacher and, and I didn't even think at the time that you could do anything else. But something within me struck a nerve and I literally went home and realised I was wearing glasses from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed. And then what I did is I started almost a little bit of an experiment on myself. And literally within two months, I went back to the optometrist and I've never need reading glasses since. I have them for reading and also for distance. And in two months, I managed to get out of glasses for reading and never had to have them again since. And that was really quite amazing for me. And I was really excited then by that. What was even more amazing that in six months, I passed a driver's license with 2020 vision. And so from that moment, people started saying, how do you do that? How's it work? And I started running private groups. And then in 1990, this is way back in 1993. So this is actually almost 30 years next year, which is just amazing. And the year after, a few years later, I actually set up a business called iPower, which was about helping people improve their eyesight. And it was pretty much a standard eyesight program that you'll see in many programs. And I certainly did look at what else was out there. I was one for not just taking it from optometrists or behavioural optometrists or from vision educators. 
I, I looked at massage, I looked at kinesiology, I looked at a whole lot of energy work. And I recognized pretty earlier on, and mainly because of my own experience, that I can remember driving home and seeing perfectly clearly, and I got to the very last set of traffic lights and thought, I don't have my glasses on. And I blinked and opened my eyes and I couldn't see. And I physically had to put my glasses on to go home. And I thought, does that one thought change? Because I was perfectly fine until I had that one thought about, oh, I can't see without my glasses. And that's what exactly what happened. And then in 1999, I actually got a chance to speak in Los Angeles at the very first Natural Vision Conference. And I think Claudia was there as well, actually. And it was an amazing event. And there I spoke about the impact that emotions have on eyesight. And the impact, if you like, that emotions have on our life, not just on our eyesight. And so I've really dedicated the rest of my life looking specifically at that area. And it's the area that I want to look with everyone today. And recently, in the last three years, I've developed the business into a school called the thevisionschool.org. And we've got an offer for people later on. I want to give people something that you can take home with you, not just, you know, listen to this, et cetera. But there's such a vast area that life can completely change where we can clear these blocks that stop us from living our full life. And sometimes that's to do with our physical eyesight. Sometimes that's to do with our vision of life. Sometimes it's about how we're living life and how we expand ourselves out there and who we are out there and things like that. So to me, that's just as important as doing the eye exercises and doing those sorts of things. And the work that I'm doing at the moment is all about relaxation of the eyes and letting go of those blocks. That's all I'm doing at the moment. I'm, I'm actually simplifying my work so that people and people are getting greater results. It, it's been quite a remarkable process, uh, particularly over about the last 12 months. I've really cut back on, on what I'm doing. And so what I want to do for people is I really want this to be interactive. And so I'm going to invite people to come on. And if you want to come on, all you need to do if you're here live is just raise your hand electronically. Um, and then I'll know that you, you, you're wanting to come on and we can invite you on. How's that, Claudia? We can do that. Yeah, um, I do not doing the YouTube live, but we can look. People can post things in the chat. And um, also on YouTube, they can post in the chat. And that's what sure. we can respond to. All right. Yeah. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on, on someone. So um, I'm going to give you a statement. And the way we're going to do this, Claudia, is I've, I've got four statements I really want to cover today. And the first one is I choose to see. I choose to see. So if anyone can really relate to that. And um, Martha, I'm actually going to ask you if you want to type in the chat room, what does that mean for you? I choose to see. And... I'm, I'm just letting you know from my side, it really is about seeing what's there at the moment. You know, like sometimes we can live a life with a bit of an illusion about what's actually going on. And so this is really about being really prepared to choose to see what's actually happening out there. So Martha, I'm hoping that you can relate to that in your own life that, and for everyone else living, listening, that this statement I choose to see is about being in the present moment and not about, oh, gee, if only, or I wish this was different, or I wish that was different. And one of the biggest things we have to have to start with is the, the willingness to say, I'm going to be aware of what's actually going on, not what I think is going on or what I hope to go on, but what is actually there. And so what Martha's said is I think it means that I can decide when and what I want to see. And it, it actually goes further than that. I'm seeing it for you, Martha. I'm actually seeing it for you. This is about really embracing everything that you see. And I think much of what you actually see is more than just the visible too, by the way. I think that there's a real sense of seeing a sense of what's really going on or you'll get a sense of how people are feeling. Um, you may even get a sense of angels and stuff around you if you if into that. So I get a sense that there's a bigger vision here for you than just with your eyes. And so that's what we really want to clear for you today. And this is 
not just for Martha, as I said, this is for everyone as well. So we have, a, right. comment in the YouTube, we have a comment in the YouTube saying, pick me, pick me, uh, raise hand. <laughs> um, so how do you, on YouTube, there's only the option of chat. So there's no like, interaction. Sure. In terms of, um, how can we do that? So I know that usually you bring on people in, in my Clear Vision Club community after the YouTube live, we will be doing that. We will be looking face to face. And Sure. You know, I, I'm, I'm really happy that we just picked some of these people and even yourself, Claudia, while you're there because you're there live and you can represent for these people as well. Right, so, I'm representing you know, the YouTube, yes. You're representing for these people and we all get cleared, including yourself, including me. Like these are brand new statements that we all get to, to, to deal with. So. What I'm going to do is show you how we clear this now in less than a minute. And it's really an energy creation. And what we're noticing is uh, one of the things I've been able to do, once I got 2020 vision, I started looking at what else there is there in terms of eyesight. And one of them is seeing auras. And so I also have the ability of picking up auras and energy around the body. And what this technique that Claudia mentioned earlier called life body alignment is about, is about clearing the energy fields in that body. So what we're gonna do, Martha, for you, and, and what we're actually gonna do for everyone is I'm just gonna shift that energy now. And I just want everyone, just be aware of how you're feeling while this is going on. Some people notice it, some people have no idea what's going on and that's okay, it still has the effect. Okay, and then Martha, I just want you to say to yourself, and I'll be muscle testing this from now on, can you say, I choose to see? And I could just say that again. And as you say it again, I notice it's actually holding strong. And it feels different. It feels like it's more solid. I can see you nodding your head there going, yes. Yeah. So, you know, what, what this says to me is we've taken away the, the stress around that statement. And so this is for everyone. If in the chat room, you want to notice if there's already a difference in how you see, put it in the chat room. And it would be really interesting to see what's going on there. So that's the first statement I want to look at. The second one, we're going to do it slightly differently. But Claudia, did you want to add anything to that for yourself? No, I just feel, I, I feel different too. I mean, uh, it's interesting. I, yes, I love it. I just, it's like a subtle energy shift. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, that's, that's, that's a really great way of describing a subtle energy shift. It's like something's different. I can't quite describe it, but it's different. And that's how this, this work really operates. And the second statement I want to give people, and I think it's a really cool statement is, I choose to see the past. I choose to see the past. And the way that I see that, and, and again, if someone's in the chat room there and wants to come in, that's fine. But the way I see this is I often describe to people, what is, what is it in life that you don't want to see? What is it in life that you don't want to see? So and most people, people go, oh, you know, it might be relationships, it might be whatever. Claudia? So people put something in the chat they don't want to see or what, like? Yeah, put it in the chat room. Now, I want to make it really more specific. And before you put it in, what we want to do is I want you to go and just stop for a minute and reflect. And even if you have to close your eyes, and I want you to think about when you first got your very first pair of glasses. And it might be at 45, it might be at 16, it might be at 10. And I want you to think about getting your very first pair of glasses. And you may or may not be all that happy with them. Maybe it was good to see with them. Maybe if you're a bit younger, you know, it was a bit dorky when we were kids to wear glasses. So it was a bit uncomfortable as well. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go back one or two years prior to getting your glasses. Because what was actually happening wasn't that your eyesight deteriorated and you got glasses the next day. It takes a period of time. And so for most people, I want you to go back one to two years before you got to glasses or just trust your intuition that you're going back to exactly the time that you're meant to go to. And in doing that, what I'd love you to do is to reflect on what was happening in your life. 
And what was it that you didn't want to see around that time? And for some people, it could be the end of a relationship. For others, it could be the death of a grandparent often comes up. For some, it could be as simple as we changed schools. I went from one school to another and I lost all my friends. And we've already had a comment here from someone, the death of a brother, and I can really understand that, that real, you know, what's going on here? And I, please let me know how old were you then at that time? I'd be really interested. So we see, yeah, we see my ex-husband ex -husband had an affair, the failures and the chaos. Um, yeah, for me, it's hard to say because I got my glasses at three and I do not remember, even at three, I don't remember. Okay. So, <laughs> I was little. Yeah. So I just wanted to say, you know, one person here, it's 43, got the glasses at 45, you know, absolutely matches. Mm -hmm. And my suggestion in those cases is there's, if you're wearing glasses, there's probably some unresolved stuff going on. You know, so reach out to someone. There might be need to even write a letter to your brother and then burn that, you know. Like, it doesn't have to be a huge process. But really look at whatever it is and really start to tackle that and really say, okay, what is it that I'm now prepared to look at? And I'm strong enough and I'm safe enough to look at that. Do you want me to read some of the YouTube comments? Or? Yes, please. Love to. Okay, so there's um, my Nana had just died peacefully but traumatic for me diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, um, age 40, my business partner swindled me out of a lot of money. Um, Susan said, I was six, maybe when I got my glasses for lazy eyes. Uh, Lowell said, uh, moved schools, different states, parent fight, parents fighting. So yeah, lots of that. And also okay. we have a question in the, in the chat here on Zoom asking, what if, I, if you cannot remember when you got your glass of what was going on, which is also the case for me because I was yeah. so fun. Yeah. Okay. So I want to answer that one. Well, great replies too, by the way. And I'm really, you know, really impressed how people have just really dived in and, and been really honest about what you've done. So congratulations. Um, in terms of your situation, Claudia, being age three, in most of the cases when it's really a young child getting glasses, what I've generally noticed, it's been that you've surrogated, particularly in your case, for your mother. So it's almost like as a young child, you're taking on your mother's pain and your mother's emotions of what was going on. So what I'd be really interested in is what was happening to your mother one or two years before that. Oh my God, she was, she, my sister was born a year after, 13 months after, and she was told when you're breastfeeding back in the 60s, you can't get pregnant. And she was pregnant again when I was three months old. And she was just, I mean, of course, once the baby was there, but she, like imagine sure. back in the day, you had to cook the, the diapers on the store, I mean, they didn't have a washing machine. I mean, there was just like, she was like stressed out. I mean, yeah, not yeah. happy. Yeah. yeah. And so this whole thing of I want, I don't want, I mean, you know, like, you know, obviously I want this child, but it's just so much work. And as a baby, you're trying to sort of pick that up, what's going on. You know, yeah. am I wanted even, you know, like that sort of stuff. And mm -hmm. so, you know, even if you can't see it, there, there are connections there and, and, and I want to also answer the other one. And thank you for sharing, Claudia. That's, that's amazing. And um, for the other person who was talking about, like adults sometimes say to me, I can't remember. And part of that is we have a really good safety mechanism, our mind. And if something's really traumatic, we'll just put it to the side. And so quite often, we're just putting these traumatic things to the side. And, and when I say traumatic, it doesn't mean that, you know, it's sort of going to hit the headline news, but it's what's traumatic for you. That's what counts. And so a coping mechanism may be that we have to put it away. And in this clearing I'm about to do, it doesn't matter whether or not you can remember or not. That's just to help our awareness. This statement is working on a subconscious basis of clearing that for you gently so that we can actually move forward. So I'm really excited about this one because this is a really important one for us to clear so that we can start being in the present moment and so we can look to the future. But if we're stuck in the past, that's sort of what happens. And um, the question here that's coming up is, that does it doesn't matter whether the glasses were near sighted or far sighted? Um, my, experience, my experience is two things. First of all, there's no textbook answer for people. 
Like we can say, I, can, I'm, I was about to give you a textbook answer, which I will give you, um, but I want you to recognize that we are all individuals. And you know, for some people, some people, for example, have their livers on the other side of their body, for example, you know, like it's just, everything's transversed around. So we can't say the liver is always on the right-hand side, but some people it's on the left. So I, I just want to say that before I, I tell you this, but I guess I'll tell you from my experience that my experience when I was a teenager, I had no idea what my future was going to be. I had zero idea of I really wanted to do this. And I really just floated by and I know what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do what my brother and sister did. So my sister did sciences, my brother did humanities. So I did the only option there was, which was business. And that was the only reason for actually doing it. No real desire to do anything else. And so for myself and for a lot of other people, if distance is seeing into the distance is an issue, it generally happens from an early age because we can't see the future. Now, the reverse is true when we get to our mid 40s and 50s, right? And we're up to something like 90% of adults over 45 are now wearing glasses. Just think about that. And no one's calling that a, a, you know, a big pandemic and everything like that. But we've got so many people now wearing glasses. And what that is about and what it was about for me, because I, I, I had that situation at 30, was have I achieved what I thought I was going to achieve? In other words, I might have had a big vision about, yep, I finally think I'm going to be, you know, this out in the world, I'm going to be in charge of all these things. And at 45 or 50, I find out I've still got the same job or close to it than I had when I was 25. And therefore, it's about not seeing the past in that situation. And I actually believe that's the easiest thing to clear, by the way. When we can clear the past, it actually opens us up to actually clear the future. So it, it does have that effect. For some people, they've got all sorts of really strange things. Some people were short-sighted one lie, long-sighted in the other, and it's like they have all sorts of stuff going on that you've got to unpack, particularly around parents and things like that. So, Claudia, is there anything else you think we want to add, or do you think we're up to clearing this? No, there was just a few more. Uh, there was a few more examples of what happened, traumatic events that happened. Um, I don't know if we need to read all those out, but um, there's a question from Rose: Is the opening of the third eye related to this? What was that? The opening of the third eye. Oh, related? totally. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. I'm going to clear that, and then I actually want to answer that because I think that's oh, where I, I want to hit to, and I think it's a separate question. So I'm just going to clear this for everyone. As I'm clearing this, by the way, I'm recognizing actually for everyone, by the way, it's really interesting that most of these blocks around the past have come from our fathers or whoever we see as our father. And that whole sense about responsibility and what we're meant to be doing and, and things like that. It's really interesting. It's just, I, I get pictures now of what happens as I clear this sort of work. Um, Claudia, can you say for me, just because there's no one else live here at the moment, can you say, I choose to see the past? I choose to see the past. How does that feel? Good. Yeah. And so for everyone else who, who shared, I'd love you to share again and just get a sense of whether that still has the same charge, if you like, or the same energy that it might have had before. It's like, oh, yeah, that happened. And it might just soften it a little bit. And when yeah, it softens... Chat, we, let us know in the chat. I don't know what they should write. Um, uh, really, I guess if there's a notice that it, it just softens any stress that you may have on that situation. So and in some cases, it could actually alleviate it completely. Oh, yeah. So type in the chat if you felt like a, there's a shift happening, like a positive shift where I yeah. choose the past feels easier. Yep. Yes, definitely has softened. Yes, it feels easier to think about. So we got a few comments here on YouTube and um, haven't seen anything on the Zoom call. Yeah, yeah okay, I see. I definitely yep. not softening. Okay. So, so that's great. Well done, everyone. And I just want to let people know that with this softening, we start to then to look at things a slightly different way. 
And I just want to also answer that question about the third eye and the connection between our eyesight and our third eye. And our third eye is our intuition. And one of the things I've been working with is, is some of the hidden techniques of Dr. Bates. And I'm just going to bring him in for, for a second because what he actually does is a lot of times he'll connect the back of the eyes with the pituitary is one of the techniques that wasn't released. And in doing that, it will actually strengthen not only in our physical eyesight, but will strengthen our intuitive seeing as well, our insight. And so I see that there's a really strong connection between how we physically see and how we see from an intuition or an insight capacity. And some of us, I guess, are more open to that. Some of us have been closed down and are opening up as well. So there's a whole range of, of things going on there. But it, it's just a really exciting area to, to look at and to recognise that what's happening behind our eyes is just as important as what's happening in front. You know what? I have a question for you regarding that because I feel like a lot of children are really intuitive. Yes. I was really intuitive. And then for some reason, I can't even remember any event of like somebody saying that's that's not true whatever i can't remember anybody like squishing that but then you sometimes question that I, I i wonder if that's an experience that you have too how is that connected to vision problems because um i already wore glasses right but when i as i remember sure. when I, but i was very intuitive and now i feel like i'm not as intuitive anymore as i used to be as a child but have you noticed that in general that people are like losing some of the intuition when they when they get glasses or I know we didn't. Well, ask. It does. I mean, it, it, it sort of is a filter, like it's another filter that stops us from seeing. And, you know, we, we talk about, and, and often, you know, I know Claudia often talks about how important relaxation is in terms of our physical eyesight. And relaxation is just as important as our intuitive vision as well. And for me now to improve eyesight, I, I'm generally, I'm finding it with people I'm doing palming i'm doing sunning and we're relaxing behind the eyes mm -hmm. what's going on behind the eyes and and it's almost like i'm simplifying everything down to that and when we can really relax both in front and behind our eyes that's when change takes place absolutely and, and it, yeah. it's sort of a permanent change not just a change in terms of your prescription but a change in terms of your life you know, I have to say at 61 years of the age, right now, I am the happiest I've ever been. You know, I'm just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying life. And I am really am focusing on doing exactly what I've just been saying, focusing on doing my palming and sunning each day still and focusing on what's going on behind my eyes. And that combination, it just seems to open up other opportunities and other miracles. You know, one of them is where I am now. I was at a place and I said, I'm going to Florida and I wasn't too sure where I was going. And I was gifted a, a condo in Cocoa Beach in Florida for the week. Nice. <laughs> you know, like that's I not too bad. About, you, know? About, you know, vision is receiving. The, vis the physical aspect of seeing is receiving light information into your brain. So I think when we, when we relax behind the eyes, and in front, we can actually receive not just the light, but we receive all kinds of intuition and gifts and like you just yeah. talked about. So, okay, yeah, that's beautiful. Let's uh, let's see if there's any questions. How do you focus on what's going on behind the eyes? I don't know if you have other things to clear for us or if that's a question you want to answer. Well, no, I think let's do some of these questions. I think they're important. Okay, um, yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, look, for me, the number one thing is through meditation. It's still in the mind. And... My advice in terms of meditation, because people would always ask me, how do I meditate? And what's the best way to meditate? And, and I would sort of normally, I've always said to people, um, you know, whatever way you write for you, and it's still true, whatever way is right for you is the best way to meditate. Lately, however, I had one lady recently who said she could not meditate at all. And it was an eyesight issue. And so what I got her to do was a 30 second meditation. That was it, just to be still for 30 seconds. And she said, I could do that. You know, I just can't sit there cross legged still for an hour and look at the wall. So I got her to be still for 30 seconds every day 
And within a week, she was so excited, she contacted me and said, oh, I'm up to a minute now. <laughs> you know, and, and we laugh and we go, look, it's just a minute, surely, you know. But for her, that was a huge achievement for someone that said, I cannot meditate at all. Do you, quick question, because I always think to me, palming is a meditation for the eyes. Yes. It's not, it's not a physical, yes, it's a rest for the eyes, physically speaking, but the more important piece is the quieting the mind. So you, you, you say the same thing, right? Because totally. Uh, in the, actual fact, meditation, if you palm, <laughs> yeah. And, and if you palm and palm, you know, really relaxed <sighs> and just be still. And it's almost like for me, I allow my mind, I can do that and even just doing that then and not have my mind thinking at all. And so the way I described it to people is quite often people will do a 30-minute meditation to find one or two minutes of stillness at the end. My point is, why not just go to the stillness? Just be still for as long as you can and expand that and not worry about that 30 minutes in front. Now, you still might want to do that for yourself and for a daily practice. But this way, you can ensure that you meditate every day. And it's the everyday process that actually makes the difference. So I'm going to answer more questions. I just want to add one more thing. I'm going to offer something for people for this as, as a sort of a bonus. And one of the things that we've got available that Claudia asked me to share with people is I have a program called Clear Blocks to Better Vision. And this program works on a chakra approach. There are seven weeks. And each week there is an hour of clearings, just like we've done here. So you'll be listening to the recordings, but you'll actually be participating live. That's the unique thing about this process. And there are also seven integration classes that go with it that have also been done that add more aspects to it. And so overall, there are over 50 statements that we clear around improving eyesight using a chakra approach from base chakra right through to divine seeing, if you like. And we're making that available for people with a link that Claudia has so that you can get access to that. I put it in the, like, in, the, in, the, in the Zoom chat, yes. Okay, yep. sorry. What I'd like to do is if you get that and send me a message, and there's a place in the Vision School to send me a message, send me a message. And if you get that program, I'm also going to give you another program called the Glass Selling Breakthrough Program. And this is very much about what's going on behind your eyes. So the, the clear blocks to better vision is going to be looking at clearing all those blocks, the things that we don't want to see, taking what we've done today to you know, 50 times that to the depth that we're going to go to. And then what I'm going to do, if you do that, I will gift you the glass ceiling breakthrough program, which actually looks at what Claudia said at the beginning, where I look at your vibration and your frequency and how to increase those. And the primary way we can increase that is about stilling ourselves and allowing spirit to operate and really at the end of the day, living the life that you're meant to be living. I believe every person is meant to live an extraordinary life. I don't believe you came down here and said, spirit said to us, Claudia, I want you to go to this earth and I want to have the best mediocre life that you can have. You know, it just, I don't think it works that way. And the best life that we can have is going to look different for each person. But my wish for every person is they actually have the best life that they can have. I love and that. So, yeah. Can we do one more? Can we clear one more thing before we? Sure. And there's, a, well, there's a something that Lana said on the YouTube that I think is really interesting. Um, she said, I so wanted to be like my beloved dad who was extremely myopic. Perhaps I thought, but my being so myopic connected me with him. People would say, oh, you have eyes just like your dad. Wow. Okay. Okay. I've got a statement for you. And hopefully this one, I think, it's the, one, it's the last one I had here. So we're going to use this one as a way of completing today. And the statement is, starts off at the same as I choose to see, but the statement is, I choose to see with eyes of love. So, Claudia, can you just say that for me, please? So I will use you as an example. I choose to see with eyes of love. 
Okay. It's almost close. You're really close to that, by the way, because I've obviously you've been doing a lot of work to that. So, all right. So think about that statement. I choose to see with eyes of love. And one of the things I often do when I'm speaking to people now is I will look into their eyes. Because when I look into their eyes, I actually feels like I'm connecting to their soul. And many, some people will look back at me and we just have this amazing connection. Some people turn away. Some people go, oh, no, it looks a bit creepy, wherever it is. But I'm, I'm going to recommend for you to find someone to look into their eyes. And if you can't do that, do the same with yourself in the mirror. Just look into your own eyes and realise who's looking at who. And then just soften that gaze. This is not like a staring contest we might have done at school. We're going to stare each other out. It's just softening your eyes and coming to the place that we ultimately are, and that's a place of love. And when we can do that, everything changes. Our physical eyesight can change like that. I, I did a retreat in Houston two weeks ago now, and it was called Create Miracles in Your Life. And every person in that room created miracles during the retreat time. What was really interesting for myself is in the second day, I walked outside, we're going to do some palming and sunny, and I looked around and my eyesight was probably the sharpest it's been for about 14 years since I had that last, I had another operation. And it was the sharpest and the clearest it had ever been for about 14 years. And what was interesting is it happened almost without me being aware of it. It just came as I relaxed. So this is a really, really great statement for people. You know, this ability to choose, it's a choice. I choose to. Someone's coming at me and attacking me. I'm going to choose to see them with eyes of love rather than going into defensive mode or attacking mode. Yeah. What's going on here? Let's have a look at this. I might have to set a clear boundary and say, hang on, this is not the way I, I want to be spoken to. That can be done with love. So it's not about being a doormat either. There's so, a question. Can you look into a pet's eyes? Yeah. Is that the same? Yeah. If it's, you know, if it's your own pet, there's, there's just love there both ways. And it's unconditional. We accept that. All right. And I think we're getting to the stage now, maybe we could actually do that with each other. Why does it have to be just with our pets? And so it really is about having courage and being really knowing that you're safe within, you know, in your own skin and who you are. And when that happens, you better go, this is just who I am. I think you bring up something really interesting because being vulnerable, right? If we see with the eyes of love, we also connecting with others that also makes us maybe feel more vulnerable. And I used to be the person who always starts crying and I always hated that I was so vulnerable. So, you know, so emotional. Sure. And, and then I went to a training, uh, and, you know, on relationships and I, and, real, and the, it turned out that the vulnerability is both my kryptonite and my superpower. So having that, but I think it's, I'm just, as I'm, as you're talking, this cropped up in my head. I'm wondering if we put with glasses, we put kind of this armor around us, you know, in order to not see with totally. glasses, but have that kind of cold, you know, and that the glasses distort it so much. The glasses distort the eyes that always, you know, bothered me when you're far side, you have these huge eyes. And if you're near side, you have these kind of, you know, small eyes, uh, you know, depending on the diopters, of course. Um, but that always, like, you know, like I, and somebody posted earlier in the chat that didn't like to be seen. I actually res resonated with that. He said to me, like, I can remember I was 12 and um, I didn't want to be seen or felt like, oh yeah, age 12 wanted to prevent boys looking at me sexually. And that was me also. I had like the Chrissy Hind bangs. I had really like, you know, like covered my, <laughs> and then the glasses. So I was like hiding here behind me. So I'm wondering wow. if there's a connection between that. Uh, between at 23 years of age, I had, Coke bottle glasses, a big long beard, long hair, everything was hidden. Right. So is there a connection between like, you know, not being able to see with the eyes of love if you have glasses because it's kind of this, 
barrier or like or is that something that you don't think is an issue like i'm just curious I, I, I just said we can go to a new depth you know i'm not saying people wearing glasses don't have love but i'm saying we can take that to no, i don't new... i don't mean that i'm just saying that there's like a it's like yeah. you don't have i agree with you. you yeah i agree with you so let's clear this anyone any other comments there while we're clearing it um let me look real quick um no no comments no, no. we're clearing it anyway it's clearing so again just notice the change because I've done this in a room of 200 people and the whole two room, 200, I, I, I got them to put up a hand who felt the difference. Every one of them put their hand up. I just feel that particularly around the solar plexus in this case, like this, there's a whole lot of stuff going on around solar plexus. And it's really interesting. Okay. So Claudia, I could just say again for me, please. I choose to see with eyes of love. I choose to see with eyes of love. Okay. That's actually holding really strong now. Do you notice the difference? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But solar plexus that tends to get tight for me when I'm stressed out or when I'm feeling like disconnected. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So look, I just want to thank you for having on. If people want to contact me, the easiest way if they go to Barry Ocatel, it's B A R R Y A U C H E T T L. Um, if you go to Facebook, I'm the only Barry Ocatel there is in Facebook. That's going to be the easiest way to make contact. Or if you go through the Vision School, you can always make contact through there. It's thevisionschool.org. And as I said, we've got that program available. Um, if you get that program, send me a note and we're going to give you the other programs, a $200 program we're going to gift to you as well so that you can look at what's going on in front of your eyes and what's going on behind your eyes. So, so yeah. hopefully that was... Uh, Beneficial to everyone today. Oh, the fourth statement. That was a fourth statement. We're going to do that with the Clear Vision Club on Zoom. So yes, that's we're going to do. There's one more we're going to do on Zoom. So we can yeah, we're going to do one. on Zoom. So um, that's my membership community. They get to be with me on Zoom and my guests um, every Wednesday. But it's just the YouTube. So anyway, I hope this was helpful for all of you on YouTube. Thank you so much, Barry. I just it's been You're wonderful welcome. to have you on and share your energy clearing. I I still don't understand how it works, but here's the thing. <laughs> We don't have to understand it, it works, and I've experienced it many times with you. So, um, it's very insightful. Uh, thank you so much, very enlightening. So, yeah, everybody's loving it. So, thank you so much, Barry. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Claudia, for having me. I really appreciate it. Next week, for